So the Las Vegas Raiders have officially hired Cliff Kingsbury as their offensive coordinator. And today we we're going to analyze the popular air raid offense and really talk it through and kind of what to expect with the Raiders this season. Because if you guys don't know this, the air raid offense has been a massive influence of the NFL. And people will say Cliff Kingsbury failed, therefore the air raid system has failed. That's actually not the case. There's so many quarterbacks in the NFL today that have come from the air raid system. And it's allowed them to transition into really good NFL quarterbacks or quarterbacks that had really good college careers. And then they became good backup quarterbacks. Guys like Case Keenum and Johnny Menzel and Baker Mayfield and Davis Webb to guys like Patrick Mahomes who have become superstar players. Guys like Kyler Murray who has become a superstar caliber quarterback. Kyler Murray wasn't coached by Cliff Kingsbury specifically, but he was coached by Lincoln Riley, who was an assistant under Mike Leach. Mike Leach was the guy that really popularized the air raid offense at his time at Texas Tech. And it goes even beyond that. Jared Goff in 2016 was coached by Sony Dykes, who also happened to be an assistant under Mike Leach. In 2012, Robert Griffin III, the second overall pick, was coached by Art Bryles, who also happened to be an assistant under Mike Leach. The air raid system, although it might not be the air raid across the board in college, has influenced a massive amount of coaches. Coaches today that are coaching in college, assistants in the NFL that are offensive coordinators. There's a lot of people that come directly from this scheme and system, and the scheme does work. Of course, with any scheme working, it's going to really come down to the coach, and if the coach can ultimately implement things that can work in the NFL, things that may not work, and really put his own twist into it, I think Cliff Kingsbury was a pretty good coach with the Arizona Cardinals. Obviously, he ended up getting fired, but sometimes I think as a head coach, if you don't have a great offense and a great defense, you're generally not going to have success. For a head coach to succeed, you have to have the guy on the other side. If you're an offensive guy, you need to have a defensive coach. If you're a defensive guy, you need an offensive coach. And I think this is a good fit for the Raiders because Cliff Kingsbury is not the head coach. He's the offensive coach. On the other end of it, Antonio Pierce, Patrick Graham will run the defense. And to me, I think this is a perfect fit. Let's get right into this film breakdown. So one of the things with the air raid system that's really built around is to push the ball downfield, right? That's going to be the emphasis on this play. And, and what that means is oftentimes you're going to see guys, multiple guys, not just one or two guys. You're going to see multiple guys running deep routes. You're going to see multiple guys running routes that are going to involve some sort of deep concepts. And to me, this is the one thing that's going to be different this year than in previous years. In previous years, the Raiders really didn't push the ball downfield. Their offense wasn't really designed to pick up chunk plays. And the air raid system is designed for that. Another thing you're going to notice is the offensive line splits are going to be much wider. Uh, you got about two yards between these offensive linemen. Compared that to the Raiders of last season, this is a very, very average normal NFL split. You can see these guys are pretty close to one another compared to the Cardinals. They are much, much further apart. Just one thing you'll notice right away among the offensive linemen is the splits are a little bit wider, and that's to keep the passing lanes open for the quarterback. It's to, you know, when the quarterback's going to run the ball on quarterback keepers, and we'll get into that a little bit later on, it's to have a little bit extra space for the quarterback to slip through it. Some people will say, well, what about if a linebacker blitzes? Couldn't that leave the offense line vulnerable to pressure. And that is a good point. Uh, but I do think if you have good enough offensive linemen, they should be able to catch that. Plus, if an offensive lineman widens out just a little bit more, you know, a three technique is still a three technique. He's still going to be on the outside shoulder of that guard. A seven or a wide nine is still going to be to the outside shoulder of the tackle. So the splits being a little bit wider to me isn't that big of a deal. But that is one of the things you'll notice right away. Another very, very important concept is in this, I think this is going to be a big thing for the Raiders to really get right this season, is that the offensive linemen are going to be left out there on an island. What I mean by that is oftentimes Cliff Kingsbury will line up three wide receivers to one side with another wide receiver on the other. The running back will actually just run some sort of route, whatever it ends up being. And the offensive linemen are going to be in a true five versus four situation. So in essence, it's going to be a true five man protection. And this is a massive deal for the Raiders. Because the Raiders' offensive line is not that good. Last season, we know the Raiders didn't come out in a true five-man protection that often. Uh, most of the time, what the Raiders ended up doing was they basically lined up a tight end right next to the tackle that basically would chip, 
the running back would influence the pass rush by making sure this guy wasn't able to speed rush and ultimately that's going to slow down the offense you're not going to have that many guys actually running out and running routes and this is very important concept if you think about it so let's say the tight end ends up staying in let's say the running back ends up staying in that means you're only going to have three guys running actual routes and the josh mcdaniel scheme is a little bit different you'll oftentimes have an influence route where the guy's not going to actually get the ball just to try to get Devontae Adams open on a dig route. And if it's not that, maybe it's some sort of scissors concept where the point is to get the post open underneath. But a lot of these times, the guy's going to be an influence. He's not actually going to get targeted within the play. That's not the case with the Cliff Kingsbury scheme and system. Every single guy here is going to have an opportunity to catch the football. Every single one of these routes, it's going to be designed. They're going to be a part of the read. There will be true four or five reads on almost every single pass play. And to me, that's massive. You know, when you can design an offense where you get four or five guys running routes, and of those four or five guys, you can actually target three or four of those guys. To me, that's how an offense is going to have success. That's how you're going to score a lot of points. And I think with the Cliff Kingsbury offense, we kind of saw that. In 2021, where Kingsbury had Kyler Murray fully healthy for the entire season, the guy had an MVP caliber season, and uh, the guy had the opportunity to th- throw the ball to kind of whoever he wanted to. Here, you got a 41-yard touchdown pass, but you can see that these guys are actually running routes. These guys aren't just influences. You know, you have the receiver here. If Kyler Murray ends up running this way, he'll have that option. However, because he's rolling to the right, you have the option here, the receiver running that post. And then you even have an underneath guy if if you needed to, right? So to me, Cliff Kingsbury is going to design an offense that's going to allow you to target multiple people. Now, I want to point one other thing out within the Kingsbury offense. And I think this play kind of does a pretty good job at showing you kind of what Kingsbury is able to do. So when you have five guys actually running routes, that really stretches a defense. So most defenses will play two safeties deep. Uh, And ultimately, when you play two safeties deep, you'll keep five guys underneath. Maybe you'll drop a third guy deep and you'll keep four guys underneath. But oftentimes, you limit the explosive play, right? You limit the deep passing play. Now, Kingsbury's offense is a little bit unique because when you have so many guys running these routes, you're going to get a lot of one-on-one opportunities. Uh, In my opinion, Devontae Adams is going to benefit tremendously from the Cliff Kingsbury offense. Watch what the safety does here. The safety is going to end up taking the short route away. And this is important because that's going to give you one-on-one with the corner and the wide receiver at the top of your screen. And Murray takes his shot and gives A.J. Green a 50-50 jump ball. And A.J. Green makes the catch. This is one of the things you'll notice a lot with the Arizona Cardinals offense under Cliff Kingsbury. Is there was a lot of true one-on-one coverage. And it'll be up to the Raiders quarterback to throw those 50-50 balls and give Devontae Adams and Jacoby Myers and Michael Mayer those opportunities. Now, I want to show you guys this other pass here. This is going to be a 34-yard completion to A.J. Green. Uh, This is a very interesting play because the defense is coming out in a cover four. And uh, with the cover four, what ends up happening is you will have four guys deep. But you also have three guys underneath. Now, here's one of the interesting things with this offense. You're going to actually end up getting a wide receiver to run deep here. You'll get another wide receiver to run across the field here. And then you'll get a third wide receiver to run this deep out. And that's who Kyler Murray is going to ultimately throw the ball to. But here's the point that I'm making. If you're in a cover four, right, that means you get two guys that are basically going to take the deep guys. The underneath will take anything from the number one as long as he doesn't cross the middle of the field. So the cornerback's going to run deep with the deep wide receiver here. The safety here will take any sort of crossing pattern. So he's going to take the wide receiver running the deep cross. And now you're really stretching the defense. One of these two guys has to be able to pick up the deep out route. And you'll see that these guys just aren't going to get enough depth. Uh, So essentially what the Cliff Kingsbury offense does on this play is They run routes deep enough that it gets behind where the defensive players are. And you're really stretching the defense out. Now, there's obviously a way you could stop this theoretically. And that's going to be just to back your guys up. Just back your defense up a little bit. And I'll show you guys an example here where you're going to play the air raid system. But you're going to basically put in a bunch of cornerbacks. And you're going to actually play this deep. And this is one of the things that team started to do a little bit more against the Arizona Cardinals back in 2021, where Kyler Murray was just taking over the league, right? 
uh, team started playing way off coverage. As you guys can see, these guys, eight yards off the ball, 15 yards with these safeties, even the linebackers like eight yards off the ball. So essentially what you're doing is you're going to say if the Cardinals want to run all these deep passes where they have multiple guys running deep, like look at this, you got all these guys running deep routes. Well, if you want to do that as a defense, we're going to just sit back and, and play a prevent style of defense where we're going to just play over the top. And this is going to be the one way teams will attack the Raiders. This is the one way teams will attack the Cliff Kingsbury offense. Now, there's one thing that Cliff Kingsbury also does within the offense to kind of attack if defenses want to take this route. Uh, so if you're going to back your guys up the way they are es essentially aligned here, where all these guys are playing so far back, there's going to be a couple of different strategies to, to attacking that. So one of them is going to be just to run a screen underneath it. A uh, screen to your running back where you're basically going to get the offensive lineman out there and try to pick up, you know, five, six, seven, eight yards with the screen pass. Uh, this is going to be one of the bread and butter plays the Raiders will run. When teams are going to back their guys up the way you see these defensive players basically doing to the to the Cardinals on this one. Uh, so they'll run screens to the running back. And aside from that, another thing they'll do is you can run a run pass option with a screen element to it. So the quarterback's going to look at the numbers within the box. Uh, and he can throw this screen pass. And the screen pass here picks up 10 yards. So this will be another way to attack a defense if the defense is going to back their players up. Uh, now, this one's kind of interesting because this is one of the bread and butter plays that Cliff Kingsbury is going to run a ton. I mean, our first play of the game that Cliff Kingsbury runs in that first preseason week, it's probably going to be one of these plays right here, right? You're going to get a guy in motion. The quarterback's going to look at the numbers within the box, right? And you can see right now, there's more numbers to the inside here than there are to the outside here. Uh, essentially, you got two guys up going up against two guys here. So it makes sense to throw the screen pass here. So again, a run pass option. And the pass isn't always necessarily going to be downfield in this, right? It'll be a screen play that they'll attach to it. But again, they can also hand the football off here. And you can tell because of the way the offensive linemen are going to block this, uh, they are truly trying to run the football on this one. Um, but the quarterback pulls it and he throws it and this one picks up 10 yards. So this is another way that they're going to ultimately attack defenses. Another thing the Raiders will do this season is they're going to run a ton of read options. This is a big part of the scheme and system here. Now, of course, this will be quarterback dependent. You know, if it's Aiden O'Connell, we're not going to run these plays. But uh, something tells me the Raiders are going to target a quarterback in this draft that can run with the football. Uh, it may not be Justin Fields that we trade for. It could be Bo Nix, who ran a very similar style of offense at Oregon, right? It was a uh, quick reads. There were option plays within his uh, scheme at Oregon. He ran read options. He ran quarterback keepers. And the quarterback keepers is another part of it, which I obviously haven't shown you guys, but one of the things the Raiders would do with their quarterback, the Raiders are going to have their quarterback run the ball a lot on these design quarterback keepers. Uh, this one right here, you can tell the offense lineman and the receivers are just blocking this for the quarterback to take off running. Uh, this is second and nine, and you can see how the linemen are basically going to position their body. If you look at the guard here, look at him turn his body right there uh, to allow the quarterback to kind of get out of there. You can see that the tackle is also going to influence the defensive end upfield, the way he turns his body. Uh, and then you can see Hudson as well is going to run downfield right away, understanding what the play is. And the quarterback just takes off running. So this will be another element for the Las Vegas Raiders that they'll have, depending on the quarterback, of course, there's going to be a lot of quarterback runs, read options, uh, screen plays, and run pass options, and quarterback keepers. The Raiders offense is going to really be revolved around, you know, throwing the ball short in the screen plays and, and, and run options and those type of things. But outside of that, they'll also be looking to push the ball downfield. They'll be looking to gain explosive plays. We're going to come out in this empty formation a ton, right? Three or four wide receivers out there, a running backs out there. Uh, we're going to come out where these guys are going to be running 10, 15, 20 yards downfield. And the quarterback's going to have to look to possibly push the ball. Right. And again, I think the Raiders actually hitting on their quarterback in this draft is going to be a big part of it. Right. A McConnell, I don't think can run this offense uh, because what happens a lot of times with this offense is teams are also going to look to blitz you. Right. They're going to bring five guys and they're going to want the quarterback to quickly get the ball out. And if he's not able to, which a lot of the times you're not able to get the ball out, if the defense plays close enough 
and they bring one or two extra guys, you got to be able to get out of there, right? You got to make people miss. And uh, on this one, uh, Kyler Murray makes people miss and he picks up over 20 yards on third and 10, right? Because he has that ability to create, right? And you see, it's a, just a really nice shot right there by Kyler Murray. So I think as the Raiders go forward, you're going to have to get that quarterback and you're definitely going to have to revamp the offensive line. To me, we don't have a right tackle that can truly anchor down. Uh, we don't have a center that can really contain and not allow a massive push right through the middle. Uh, the Raiders got to revamp the offensive line. At this point, the left tackle and left guard are probably the only true guys that I think should probably be back from last season. Uh, you could make the argument that we can maybe move Illuminor to right guard and he might be good enough. But uh, Thayer Munford's not going to be able to get it done, in my opinion. Uh, Munford, you know, putting him out here where he has to go up against the guy 80% of the time in a true one-on-one -on -one situation, it's not going to work, right? The Raiders are not going to be able to help him as much as they did this past season. If you guys go back and watch the tape, oftentimes they're going to line up a tight end here and they're going to chip this guy. That's not going to happen with Cliff Kingsbury as we go forward. Now, of course, there's a chance that Kingsbury also comes in this season and he does change his offensive approach up. Maybe he plays a much more pro style of offense. And there's definitely that possibility, right? So never say never on that. But it's going to be interesting to see the Raiders kind of evolve this season. I'm very excited for it. And of course, we will be covering the Raiders this season. So subscribe if you guys are not subscribed. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs up. And I will see you guys next time with another video.